I want her home, uh, no matter what. I, I don't care who did it, I just want her back. She doesn't deserve this. Just let her go, just drop her off anywhere. The hospital, just please, if you could just find it in your hearts, just please let her go. The family's gravely concerned the fact that she was shot and kidnapped is a parent's worst nightmare. It really is a mystery. This started as a shooting and it ended with a kidnapping. Andrea Vasquez was born on April 11, 2004 in Downey City, California. She grew up in a one-story house with her Mexican immigrant parents, Eduardo and Anna, as well as her much older sister, Edlin. Her father was originally from Jalisco, Mexico, so she used to spend summer vacations there when she was young. As a child, Andrea's introverted nature didn't deter her from leaving a lasting impact on those around her. Despite having a small circle of friends, she was known for her wit, humor, and ability to lift spirits. Her father also encouraged her to engage in sports, so from ages 7 to 14, she dedicated herself to soccer, earning accolades and trophies from the Downey Youth Soccer League. However, it was in high school that Andrea's true passion emerged, the world of fashion. During her junior and senior years, she often expressed her dreams of creating clothes for renowned artists and luxury brands. She also envisioned the creation of her own online boutique. This was why she eventually decided to pursue fashion design at Fullerton College. While studying, she also worked part-time at a mall in Cerritos, California. As a side hustle, she also helped her sister Edlin with her lash art business. Despite a 15-year age gap, Andrea and her older sister shared a remarkable bond. The siblings often referred to each other as soulmates. Despite their contrasting personalities, they bonded over their love for coffee and music, and even got a tattoo of each other's name on their necks, a secret hidden from their mother for years. Regarding matters of the heart, Andrea's love life began to flourish in her late teens. According to Anna, Andrea and her boyfriend had been acquainted since high school. However, they never found themselves in the same class and rarely exchanged words on campus. It was only years later that their romance would blossom. I loved her more than anybody could understand. Every moment with her was like a dream, you know? Sadly, this dream would turn into a harrowing nightmare one fateful summer night. On August 19th, 2023, the couple decided to go on a date at Penn Park in Whittier, California. There, they sat in the trunk of their parked car for hours enjoying each other's company until a little past midnight. Suddenly, a white Toyota Tacoma pickup truck pulled up near their vehicle. The couple initially didn't pay attention to it and went about with their date. However, the driver then stepped out of his truck with a weapon in hand. Without warning, he began to open fire in the couple's direction. With no time to react, Andrea was immediately shot in the head, and both she and her boyfriend fell to the ground just behind their car. Andrea's boyfriend instinctively crouched in a desperate attempt to shield himself. He then looked over to his girlfriend to assess the gravity of her injuries. By this point, she was already bleeding profusely from the gunshot wound. Desperately wanting to get some help, he tried to get up to check if the shooter was still there. To his horror, he spotted the gunman with his rifle raised, and he was slowly making his way towards him. When he got really close, he was about like five feet six feet and he just looked at me he had like no emotions in his eyes just he looked like he was on a mission and i could tell like he he didn't really have a heart you know fearing for his life he then made the agonizing decision to run away leaving his girlfriend behind in a surprising twist the gunman actually allowed him to flee and didn't fire another shot andrea's boyfriend then frantically sought help from another couple in the park he also called the emergency hotline to report the incident to the police and contacted Andrea's family to let them know what just happened. However, it was during this critical moment that the assailant took advantage of his absence. The gunman picked Andrea up from the ground and forcibly dragged her into his truck before driving away. Moments later, Andrea's boyfriend heard the pickup truck leaving. He hastily returned to the crime scene to check on his girlfriend. However, Andrea and the gunman were no longer there. All that was left was a pool of blood near his car. Upon learning what happened to Andrea, Edlin immediately tried to track her whereabouts via Apple's Find My iPhone feature. 
She and her sister had made it a habit of sharing each other's locations for their safety, so she was confident she'd be able to find Andrea. Edlin then drove from her home in Downey and followed the directions indicated on her sister's phone. Eventually, she ended up in an isolated open field in Riverside County in Moreno Valley. When she got there, the local authorities hadn't arrived yet, so she started searching for her sister on her own. However, Andrea was nowhere to be found. To make matters worse, Edlin spotted a pile of blood within the vicinity. At this point, she began to fear the worst. Meanwhile, Andrea's mother, Anna, and their aunt went to the Downey police station for help. Anna provided the authorities with the location indicated on her daughter's phone. She also informed them that, based on witnesses in the park, it was a white pickup truck that took her daughter. Anna and her sister then pleaded for the local officers to intervene. Unfortunately, they'd be met with bureaucratic hurdles. This added frustration to the already distressing situation. They say, you, you have to go to Whittier Police. And I say, I can't even drive. I, I was shaking. I, can, I cannot drive. And they said, then you have to wait till they come here. Given that the crime took place in Whittier, the Downey Police Force refrained from immediate action. According to them, they were simply following jurisdictional boundaries. Furthermore, one particular officer said that it'd be virtually impossible to stop every white truck driving on the freeway to look for Andrea and the suspect. It hurt me so much to see my sister like that, and I approached to one of the officers. And at that time, we believe it was a white truck, and I say to the officers, please, it's, it's a white truck, they have my niece. Please, can you do something, you know, her sister is tracking her phone. The officer told me, you know how many white trucks are on the freeway. And I told her, stop all of them. What the Downey police force did instead was to contact the Whittier station to ensure a coordinated and appropriate response. While the Downey officers were just trying to follow protocol, the Vasquez family became understandably upset at their seeming lack of urgency. Former LAPD detective and Vasquez family spokesman Moses Castillo also raised concerns about how the Downey police force initially responded. Why couldn't they do that? Simple as that. He remarked that the local authorities should have gone after the kidnapper, even if it required crossing jurisdictional boundaries. In urgent situations like this, boundaries should not have been an issue. Nonetheless, as soon as the report reached the Whittier police station, they acted immediately. Their law enforcement team swiftly deployed members to the Moreno Valley location pinpointed by Andrea's phone. They arrived fully equipped with drones and K-9 units as they began a thorough search of the expansive open field. Additionally, they sent out a missing person alert across multiple social media platforms as they sought any information regarding Andrea's whereabouts. As for the Vasquez family, while they were extremely worried, they clung to hope, trusting that the dedicated police officers would find Andrea alive. They knew it was a long shot, but as devout Christians, they also believed that a miracle could still happen. Drawing strength from their faith, the Vasquez clan held a prayer vigil at Penn Park, at the very spot where Andrea was shot and abducted. For the next 48 hours following Andrea's disappearance, the Whittier police force tirelessly worked around the clock to locate her. They persevered despite the challenges posed by Tropical Storm Hillary, which unleashed powerful winds and heavy rainfall. This significantly complicated the already demanding task of searching through the fields. They had a search crew, canines, drones, everything around that area. But unfortunately, that's when the hurricane hit that night. So it was really hard to do anything else. Finally, on August 21st, at around 11.50 p.m., their search operation would come to a tragic end. Police say the body of Andrea Vasquez was found in a field nearly 48 hours after she was abducted in Whittier. Detectives found Andrea's lifeless body in a vegetation field off Alessandro Boulevard and Merwin Street in Moreno Valley. This particular remote area was around 60 miles from Penn Park, where she was kidnapped. The spot where they found her also wasn't far from the last location indicated on her sister's phone. Her identity was confirmed quickly, partly due to the tattoo of her sister's name on her neck. Because it was really late, the Whittier police officers opted to delay delivering the heartbreaking news to Andrea's family until the following day. On the morning of August 22nd, the Vasquez family received the official notification about Andrea's tragic fate. For her family, it marked the most agonizing day of their lives. Today is the worst day of my life. 
we received uh, the news that my daughter died and um we we have we have a lot of hope that he that she was alive but this morning everything every <laughs> and i can describe pain i know i know and i hope you understand me we are devastated um my uncle and my aunt are heartbroken um we we have a good strong support a family support and so we're here supporting um and just just trying to process all of this it's hard community members held another candlelight vigil that night at penn park in a show of solidarity this time more than 100 people showed up to honor andrea's memory friends and families prayed and took turns reminiscing about their most cherished moments with the deceased in an interview with a local news station covering this event Andrea's mother publicly appealed for an end to the criticisms directed at her daughter's boyfriend. The Vasquez family held no ill will against him for what he did. They believed he only did the right thing by running away and calling for help. A lot of people are speculating he may have had something to do with this. A lot of mean, nasty comments online. You were just telling me you wish that would stop. Yeah, because he's, he's not... Um... He do the right thing. If he don't, if he don't do what he do, he was a, a, another victim. Since this shooting and kidnapping incident was first reported, Andrea's boyfriend has faced harsh comments from the public for leaving her behind at the crime scene. Some even went as far as insinuating that he was in on the crime since he was able to escape unscathed. These allegations, however, have no basis. Nonetheless, the public criticisms did affect him partly contributed to his decision to maintain anonymity throughout the media coverage of the incident. While the Vasquez family was still grappling with the aftermath of this tragic event, local authorities announced a significant breakthrough in the case later that same day. The Whittier Police Department arrested Gabriel Esparza Monday afternoon and believe they recovered the weapon used in the shooting. Detectives from the Whittier Police Department revealed that they had apprehended the assailant, a 20-year-old man named Gabriel Sean Esparza. His arrest actually took place the day before, August 21st, at approximately 3 p.m. This was just a few hours prior to the discovery of Andrea's body. The police took him without incident at his workplace in Lakewood City. Local authorities were also able to recover the weapon and the white Toyota Tacoma pickup truck Esparza used to carry out this heinous crime. Based on reports, the weapon that Esparza used was registered under the name of another family member. It's noteworthy that, under California law, ownership of a rifle requires an individual to be at least 21 years old. Because the investigation is still ongoing, the police officers decided not to go into specifics on how they were able to track the perpetrator. However, a few reliable sources from Fox 11 Los Angeles claimed that Esparza gave an extremely detailed confession before his arrest. When asked about this, Esparza's legal counsel Ambrosio Rodriguez merely skirted around the question instead of confirming it. My client has no criminal record, comes from a very good family, was a full-time college student, had a full-time job. As for the Whittier police force, they did disclose some crucial information gathered during their preliminary investigation. For instance, they revealed that Esparza had no connection whatsoever with Andrea Vasquez or her boyfriend. All signs indicated that this was a random crime and the couple was merely at the wrong place at the wrong time. This answered the burning question of the Vasquez family as to why Andrea was targeted in the first place. This also put to rest the theories floating on social media sites that the perpetrator was a jilted ex-lover of the victim. The investigators further verified that after Esparza abducted Andrea, he indeed drove to a remote area in Moreno Valley. However, their next revelation would show just how gruesome the nature of this crime truly was. Authorities disclosed that upon reaching the open field, Sparsa attempted to do unspeakable acts on Andrea's body before ultimately choosing to abandon her in the field and drive away. It was never established whether Andrea was still alive by this point. However, evidence showed that she was still bleeding heavily from the gunshot wound by the time her body was discarded in the open field. This development came as a shock to Esparza's friends and family. According to his lawyer, everyone who knew him couldn't believe he had been charged with this crime. This is because he had no criminal record prior to this incident. He was a full-time college student at an undisclosed university. 
He also worked full-time at a Pep Boys automotive service branch in Lakewood City. Moreover, he came from a privileged background, with his father working as a captain at the Los Angeles County Fire Department. Throughout his life, he never showed any indication that he was even capable of doing something so gruesome. Esparza's lawyer also added that his client felt scared after his arrest. He further claimed that Esparza was just beginning to understand what was going on. Some legal experts interpreted this as suggesting that Esparza's lawyer could be considering a temporary insanity defense strategy. On August 23, 2023, the first of several preliminary hearings was held for this case. Around 30 of Andrea's closest friends and families gathered in a downtown Los Angeles courtroom to show support. It was also the first time they met face to face with the assailant. During the hearing, the prosecutors formally filed seven charges against Gabriel Esparza. These charges include attempted murder, kidnapping with the intent to commit another crime, attack with intent to commit a felony, and two counts of attempted forceful act. Yet despite the rumors that Esparza had already confessed to the crime, his lawyer would enter a not guilty plea for him on all charges. The plea of not guilty denying all allegations. Another preliminary hearing took place on October 25th, 2023. Andrea's closest friends and families gathered in the courtroom again to show support and hope for a conclusion to this case. However, the judge merely rescheduled the hearing to early 2024. Vasquez family spokesman Moses Castillo acknowledged that these preliminary hearings may be drawn out over 2024 or even 2025 before an official trial begins. Because of Esparza's not guilty plea, it's possible that it may take several years before he's finally sentenced. Regardless of how long the legal proceedings may take, the Vasquez family remain steadfast in securing justice for their beloved daughter. I want justice for my daughter. She just is starting her life. I don't want this to happen to other girl. Aiding them in their quest is Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. In an interview, the DA vowed that he'll do everything in his power to ensure that Esparza is ultimately held accountable for his actions. As proof of this, he sought special circumstance charges against Esparza, something he never did with his other cases. In the context of California law, when a defendant is charged with special circumstances, it implies that certain elements make the crime more severe or heinous. And if convicted, the defendant faces enhanced penalties. With this, Gabriel Esparza could face a conviction that will give him the maximum penalty of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Capital punishment is also a legal penalty in California. However, as of June 2023, it cannot be put in effect due to an official moratorium imposed by Governor Gavin Newsom, suspending all executions. As of late 2023, Esparza is being held without bail at Whittier Police Department. As part of the ongoing investigation, an autopsy was conducted on Andrea's body the day after the preliminary hearing, August 24th, 2023. However, her official cause of death remains a mystery as the Riverside County Coroner's Office refused to disclose the results to the public. It was also around this time that the Downey Police Department issued a statement in answer to the criticisms of their initial response to the case. According to their press release, they actively engaged in the case as soon as Andrea's mother approached them in the early hours of August 20th. They further asserted that they swiftly gathered information from Andrea's boyfriend and promptly shared it with the Whittier Police Department. To show their support, the Whittier station also acknowledged the help of the Downey Police Department and finding the killer within 48 hours of the crime. Hoping that God gave me the miracle. It doesn't happen. Given how the tragic events had impacted her relatives' lives, Andrea's cousin, Diana Ortiz, took the initiative to launch a GoFundMe campaign to aid the Vasquez family in their journey through grief and pursuit of justice. The response was overwhelming, with contributions pouring in from all over the country. Many also sent condolences and well wishes to the family on the fundraising platform. Within a month after the fundraiser began, the Vasquez family had received a little over $40,000 from over 900 donors. They expressed gratitude for the outpouring of support. However, they temporarily halted the fundraising campaign at this time. On September 6, 2023, family and friends bid their last goodbyes to Andrea as she was laid to rest at Rose Hills Memorial in Whittier, California. It was a beautiful ceremony celebrating a life that had been taken too soon. Andrea Vasquez had a promising future ahead of her, 
before this senseless act of violence tragically cut her life short. My daughter have a brilliant future, I'm, I'm, and now she's not here. We're looking forward to get justice for my daughter, yes. and we're not going to stop until justice is done, because no one deserves this. Nonetheless, her memory will live on in the hearts of her loved ones, and those whose lives she touched. She's an angel, not because she's my daughter. She's an angel. She was uh, special. She was special. She, and that's what everybody told me. She was special. She didn't deserve this at all. If, you know, anyone knew her, they knew how much of a good person she was. You know, I always love her. And uh, I just miss her a lot every day. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.